The Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. Ah, the good old days, back when people were old-fashioned, and the things your grandmother used to bake were fresh and piping hot. Well, at the Marita Bakeries, things haven't changed much over the years. Like Marita old-fashioned enriched white bread. There's a seal on every loaf that says, Marita guarantees freshness and is sold fresh through day shown on the twist tie. Maintain freshness by storing at room temperature. And when Marita says old-fashioned, it means it's made from a rich old-fashioned recipe. And that means it's fresh. The idea of fresh anything, especially fresh bread, has been around for a long time. But folks forget what really old-fashioned freshness tastes like. That's why there's Merida. Merida enriched white bread. It has a freshness and taste that hasn't been around for a long time. Sure That's a fresh idea that's very old-fashioned. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still Our owner of the Circle D Ranch rode to the corral near the ranch house, leading a big black stallion with all four legs marked with white. Ho, ho there, ho. Hey, Clive, Luke, where did you get him? Sure <laughs> horse, Luke. Bought him from an hombre in Stockton who caught him with a herd of wild horses. And I paid a good price for him, too. That fellow was determined to get his price. He sure was plenty, boss. Finest horse flesh I've laid eyes on for a long time. Uh, uh, sure. Where's my son, Terry? Last time I saw him, he was on the front porch reading. Oh, doggone if I can savvy. A boy 16 years old who don't like horses always has his face stuck in a book. Oh, I reckon he'll change in a year or two. Tex, go find Terry. Tell him to come here. Sure thing. Tex says you want to see me, Dad. Yeah, that's right, son. You uh, see anything special around here? Mm, no. What am I supposed to see? Get away! Get him away from me! Oh, take it easy, Terry. That stallion just seems to take to you, that's all. He likes you. Oh, act like a man, Terry. I bought this stallion to give to you. You'll be the envy of everyone in town. Gee, thanks, Dad, but, well... Tex and I'll help you get used to him. Now, look at him. Isn't he a beauty? And let's call him Boots, huh? How about it? Why, sure, that's all right with me. Get a saddle on him, boys. He ought to have a work. I don't want to ride him right now. I... I'm not used to him. Nah, but you're afraid of him. I was hoping you'd take to this stallion like he seemed to take to you. That you'd get so as you could ride him in the Stockton Rodeo next month. This horse is plenty fast and you're light and just entry age. Dad, I, I could never ride in a rodeo. It's a straightaway race. Oh, but of course you couldn't do it. Forget you ever saw Boots. I'll let Tex take him over. As for you, just stay out of my sight a while. I get too riled when I see you around. All right, Tex, take Boots to the barn. It's time for supper. Yeah, for sure, boy. Come on. For the next few days, Terry stayed out of his father's way. From a distance, he saw Tex each afternoon racing the black stallion Boots across a flat field near the ranch house as the foreman prepared for the big rodeo race. 
Others also saw the trial runs made by Booth. Oh, ho there, ho, ho. A slick foreman of the Bar X Ranch entered the small ranch house and spoke to his boss, Milo Randers. Hi, Milo. Here, what's up, Slick? Now, Pastor Dunbar spread a while ago. Saw Tex making trial runs with a new stallion. <laughs> yeah, let him sweat it out, Slick. Everybody knows I got the big straightaway in the bag with my roan. Uh-huh. I sure hope so. This ranch could use that 10,000 first prize, Milo. But I hear Luke Dunbar spread his cash thin the past year and could also use that prize money. In fact, I know he's going to fight hard to get it. <laughs> And Slick, you know as well as I do, there isn't any horse here. Bounds has a chance against that roan. If Dunbar's stallion runs in the race, your roan will have to break his neck to win. That's sure something to think about, Slick. Maybe you better bring Pedro here later and we'll talk it over. The next afternoon, Terry Dunbar sat on the split rail fence that divided his father's property from the main trail. He knew Tex would be taking Boots for another run, and he wanted to watch without being seen by his father. Terry looked up as Dan Reed, nephew of the Lone Ranger, approached along the trail. Hi there. I'm Terry Dunbar. Hello. Oh, oh Victor. Oh, boy. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Glad to meet you, Terry. I'm Dan Reed. That's sure a fine-looking horse you have. Thanks. I like him. I have a black stallion. He's a beauty, too. Oh? Where is he? Well, watch. He'll be passing there in the field in a minute. Look. There he comes now. Say, he is a beauty. And plenty fast, too. Uh-huh. And Dad's going to enter him in the straightaway at the Stockton Rodeo. Oh, he'll have a good chance to win. But his chance would be better if someone lighter rode him. Like you, for instance. Why don't you ride him in the race yourself? Dad wanted me to, but... Well, I'm afraid of horses. Now you know the truth. Oh, I can understand that, Terry. But you can learn to like and trust them and if you try. Lots of boys would like to own a black stallion like that one. Yeah, I suppose so. Boots seem to like me right away, but... Oh, I reckon I can't get over being afraid. I think you can, Terry. Maybe I can help you. How? Well, I'll meet you near here every day and teach you to like and ride my horse, Victor. I'm sure you can overcome your fear. Dan rode to the camp he shared with the Lone Ranger and Tonto in the nearby hills. He told the masked man and Indian about Terry and his horse, Boots. The Lone Ranger remarked, Dan, I'm glad you offered to help the boy. Once he gets to like Victor and gains confidence enough to ride him, he'll lose his fear of the Black Stallion. Isn't that right? That Black Stallion is a beauty, and very fast. He'd be sure to win the straightaway race at the rodeo. That is, if Victor doesn't run against him. <laughs> You believe in Victor, Dan. That good. Oh, sure, Tano. I won't admit there's any horse can beat Victor. Except maybe Silver and Scout. We're fortunate to have such fine horses. Dan, I hope your efforts with Terry Dunbar prove worthwhile. It will mean a great deal to the boy. I hope so, too, sir. I'll do everything possible to prepare him to ride that black stallion in the race. <laughs> The following morning, Dan met Terry at the appointed place. Some time was spent while Terry became acquainted with Victor. Then Dan patiently showed the boy the correct technique for mounting quickly and for controlling a horse with a firm but gentle grasp and manipulation of the reins. Easy now. Steady, boy. <coughs> Finally, Terry mounted Victor and sat nervously in the saddle. Dan was saying, Terry, a horse seems to sense the reaction of his rider. If you're nervous, he seems to know it. Now, be relaxed, but you must let him know you're the master. Have a firm control of the reins without tugging or pulling. I, I'll try, Dan. Yeah. Let your feet rest easily, but firmly in the stirrups. Now, ride to that big cottonwood yonder. Turn around and come back. All right. Get up. Get up, Victor. For several days, Dan met Terry and taught him correct riding technique. Terry gradually lost his fear as he learned how to control a spirited horse with gentle firmness. One morning, three days before the rodeo, Terry arrived on his mare to find Dan waiting with a masked man and Indian, whom he introduced as his friends. Uh, 
While the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan watched, Terry put Victor through his paces with seeming confidence and enjoyment. Finally, flushed with excitement, the boy returned and pulled to a stop. Whoa, Victor, whoa, easy. Easy, Did I do all right? Terry, you did fine. There's no reason why you shouldn't ride your black stallion in the race at the rodeo. But please don't mention us at home. Keep our meeting a secret. All right, mister. I want to surprise Dad. I'll sneak Boots from the stable tomorrow morning and bring him here for some practice runs. Gosh, I just can't wait to see Dad's face when I show up on Boots for the rodeo race. The following morning, while Terry and his father were at breakfast, Tex hurriedly entered the ranch house. Boss. Oh, hi, Tex. Boss, I have mighty bad news. What's the matter, Tex? I just came from the barn. The black stallion has been stolen. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Remember way back when, when you were a kid growing up? You always found time to make a side trip to the little grocery store down the block. That's where you'd find the big display of Mickey snack cakes. Remember? Didn't it make you happy to pick up a devil delight and take a whiff? What a chocolatey smell. And remember the coconut-sprinkled Jim Jams or the cream-filled banana flips? Well, today, Marita Bakeries still make the Mickey snack cakes you used to love as a kid. That's why Mickey snack cakes are called smile food. The bakers know they're spreading smiles and sunshine wherever Mickey snack cakes are sold. Find a little neighborhood grocery store today or a big modern supermarket. Look for the display of Mickey snack cakes. They're all there, like you used to remember. The Devil Delights, the Jim Jams, the Banana Flips. Treat yourself to some fresh memories. Treat yourself to a Mickey snack cake. Have a smile on us. to continue. When Tex entered the Circle D Ranch House and announced that the Black Stallion had been stolen, Luke Dunbar looked up in dismay. What makes you think he's been stolen, Tex? Maybe he got loose. No, and... the padlock on his box stall was forced open. And there are hoof marks of three horses leading from the back door of the barn into the hills. Yeah, we got to get him back, Tex. Get some of the men together. We'll follow those tracks. Come on. Terry, even more dismayed than his father, rode to meet Dan and his friends, whom he found waiting at the clearing. Whoa, whoa. Easy, steady. Terry, I thought you'd bring the black stallion. Somebody stole boots during the night. What? Huh? what? Dad and some of the men are following hoof marks from behind the barn into the hills. I, I'm sorry your horse was stolen, Terry. Father and I will go join in the search. we got to find him. we just got to. Dad needs the prize money from the race, and, well, I wanted Dad to see me riding boots in the straightaway. You stay here with Dan, Terry. Toto and I will see you later. Let's go, Toto. Uh-huh. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, fella. Come on, A short time after the Lone Ranger and Toto started to help in the search, a sudden thunderstorm broke. Luke and his men were interrupted by the storm. Oh, tarnation, take it. This storm will spoil the trail of those crooks. That's right, boys. Ho, 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 ho. We'll go back to the ranch for supper, boys. I'll send word to the sheriff and have him help us find these horse thieves. Let's go. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. Get up. A masked man and Indian took shelter in an old shack until the storm passed. Then they continued the search, but without success. That night after supper, Terry, disheartened that his father and the ranch hands hadn't found his black stallion, was alone in his room. Doggone it. I'll get up at dawn, take the mare, and go into the hills to search for boots. And I won't come back till I find them. I'll leave a note for Dan. The following morning, the day before the rodeo race... Dan Reed went to the clearing as usual to meet Terry. A short time later, he returned to the Lone Ranger's camp and showed the note from Terry. Then the two men and Dan set out to trail Terry. (laughs) 
Meanwhile, Milo Rander's two men, Slick and Pedro, who had stolen the black stallion, had led the horse some distance back into the hills to a shack in a hollow. The horse was tied in a shed behind the shack. Their own horses were tethered under the trees nearby. That morning, Slick and Pedro were playing cards inside the shack. I am glad you came up here this morning, Slick. I do not like staying alone. Milo wants you to guard that stallion until after the race tomorrow. <coughs> Somebody stop him here. I see him through the window. That's the Dunbar boy. He'd recognize me, so I'll keep out of sight. He's never seen you, Pedro. Get rid of him. You see, I send him away. Morning. I'm looking for a horse, a black stallion. I thought maybe you might have seen him around here. I have not seen such a horse, amigo. This is private property. I am a trapper, and I do not like strangers coming here. Oh, I'm sorry. Like I said, I was hoping you'd seen my horse. Now you know I have not, so please, you leave. Oh, all right. Whoa, whoa there! My mare is going toward the shed back there. Hey, there must be a horse in that shed. Hey, come on back! Terry, disregarding the order, ran to the shed and opened the door. Boots! So, you know now that he is here, but he will do you no good. I have his gun, my young friend. Now, use it if you do not do as I tell you. You stole my horse. Perhaps. Walk in front of me to the shack. Walk! Uh, all right. I'll walk ahead of you. He found the stallion. Too bad for him. Hey, I know you. You work for Milo Randers. You know too much, youngster. I'll tie him, Pedro, and keep him here along with the horse till I find out from Milo what to do. A short time later, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan Reed, who had followed Terry's tracks to a hilltop, stopped among the trees. From there, they saw the shack. Recognizing Terry's horse, the Lone Ranger and Tonto decided to reconnoiter. They left Dan with the horses, then crept through the brush toward the shack. Inside the shack, Slick was preparing to leave. Uh, Pedro, I'll go to talk to Milo about the boy and the horse. I'll come back tonight and tell you what he says. We do not dare let the boy go, Slick. We would be punished this horse thief. The boss will know what to do. I... Reach, both of you. No, come ask, hombre. I will get... Ow, my arm! All right, you. You're trapped. My friend is at the back window. Better drop your gun. The redskin at the window... Uh, there's my gun, mister. Terry, I'll have you free in a minute. Come with them, Toto. Uh-huh. Quickly, the Lone Ranger removed the gag and untied Terry. Uh, mister, Boots, my black stallion. He's back in the shed. And that man works for Milo Randers of the Bar X. Mm, Milo Randers wanted to win that race. All right, Terry. We'll tie them, then take them to the sheriff. Gosh, Dad'll sure be glad to see the black stallion again. I'm sure he will. Let's go. It was decided that the Lone Ranger and Tonto would take the crooks to the sheriff, while Dan and Terry led the Black Stallion back to the Circle D Ranch. When the two boys arrived, no one was around except Tex, who hobbled out with a cane to meet them. Whoa, whoa there. Whoa, Victor, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. catfish, you found the stallion. Hi, Tex. Easy. Steady, Victor. But where's Dan? He went with the men to drive a herd to the railroad at Rockville. But tell me about the stallion. How did you come to find... I'll tell you later. When will Dad be coming back? we will be back in the morning, I reckon. He lost interest in the rodeo race, especially when I got hurt breaking in a bronc today. Gosh, then you can't ride boots even though he's back. That's right. If your dad returns in time, I reckon he'll get somebody else to ride boots. Terry will ride him in the race. Terry? Say, who are you? Reckon you don't know much about Terry. This is my friend Dan Reed, and he knows all about me, Tex. Terry has overcome his fear of horses, Tex. Uh, Terry, why not try the stallion right now? I'll saddle him for you. All right. I'll show you, Tex. Dan quickly saddled and bridled the black stallion. Then Terry, with a proud glance at Tex, confidently went to the horse and mounted expertly. Easy, steady. Now watch me, Tex. Get up, Boots. Get up there. Great day. Look at that boy. Ride. I don't savvy how he's been practicing on my horse. He wants to surprise his father at the rodeo. Man alive. He sure will do it. I'll send someone after the boss tonight. The next morning, though his father hadn't returned, Terry, mounted on boots, was in the lineup at the rodeo, ready for the race. The Lone Ranger, disguised as a cowhand, stood with Dan, Tonto, and Tex to watch the race. Ride him, Terry! Win that prize, boy! Pedro, look at 
Jerry, go! Hicks! Hicks, what's going on here? Why'd you send for me? Boss, look, the stallion Boots is in the race. He was found yesterday. Well, who's riding him? I can't tell from here. Uh, uh, one of the boys, boss. Hey, look at him go! The crowd went wild as the racing horses vied with one another for first place. Finally, as they started into the home stretch, Luke strained his eyes to see the horses. Oh, gone and I can't tell which one's ahead. They're so close. Why, oh, thunder that. That black horse in the lead. He looks like... That's your stallion, Boots. Come on, Boots. Come on. Great day. Come on, Boots. Come on, Boots. One. We won, boss. He's riding this way. Yeah. Oh, 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 Boots. He's, Why, that? He's, he's a Terry. Terry. Well, my boy. Dad, we won. Terry, Terry, son. I, well, I don't savvy, but I... Well, Terry, boy, I'm so proud of you. I, I can't say another word. Thanks, Dad. We found Boots in the hills. The two horse thieves are in jail, and the sheriff picked up Milo Randers for telling them to steal boots. Yeah, but you say we. Who are you talking about? How'd all this happen? You learned to ride like that and catching the crooks and all. My friends here, they... Hey, they've gone. Well, anyway, a boy named Dan helped me, Dad, and his good friend, the mask man. The mask man? Uh-huh. He's the one who caught the crooks. Oh, gosh, Dad. I'll never forget Dan Reed and the wonderful mask friend of his. The Lone Ranger. Times sure have changed. Time was when people saved cookouts and picnics for summer and lazy Sundays spent under a big oak tree in the town park. Well, today's family eating habits are much more flexible. Mom might have forgotten how easy it is to fix a cook-in for lunch. Maybe with hot dogs and baked beans. Or a casual dinner with cheeseburgers, soup, and salad. And as you're planning your easygoing meal, don't forget to invite Marita. As in Marita Hot Dog and Hamburger Bus. Remember, Marita? We're the people who bake while you sleep. That's the only way Marita can promise you'll find the freshest rolls and bread and cakes the very next day. On your grocer's shelf. But remember... We bake our famous hot dog and hamburger rolls all year long. So relax a little. Plan quick and easy meals your family will love. And don't forget Marita. Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger rolls. We're not just a summertime thing. a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. <laughs>